Hello ladies and gentlemen and welcome back to Tech Showdown. I'm really tired. This is my co-host Teddy. <laughs> And today I'm doing a video I was really excited to do for you guys. I couldn't delay it even though I'm really tired right now because I knew you guys were waiting for it. And that is the i7-7820X versus Ryzen 7 1700 Showdown. So the 8 core from Intel, this guy right here, going up against the uh, Ryzen 7 that you guys are familiar with, the 1700 here. So this will be a quite an interesting video, and let's jump right into it then with the uh, CPUs themselves. So the 7820X is an 8-core, 16-thread Skylake X CPU with a 3.6 GHz base clock, 4.3 GHz turbo clock, and a 4.5 GHz turbo max. The Ryzen 7 1700 is also an 8-core, 16-thread CPU but this has a base clock of 3 GHz and a turbo clock of 3.7, but both of these CPUs are unlocked. So let's talk about some of the differences between these two CPUs. So uh, a big one, obviously, is the different motherboards. So uh, the 7820X is a socket 2066 CPU. What that means is it's going to require an X299 motherboard. The Ryzen 1700, on the other hand, that can go in a, a AMD B350 or X370 motherboard. The 7820X also supports quad-channel memory, whereas the 1700 only supports dual channels. So that is quite a, a big difference there and the benefit of the 7820X. Now, the 7820X has 28 PCIe lanes to the 1700's 24, or some people will say 20, depending on how you're looking at it. The 7820X has a thermal interface material under its heat spreader. That's a big downgrade from the 1700, which is soldered down. And we'll talk about temps a bit later because, yeah, there's a big difference between these two CPUs when it comes to temperatures. Let me just say that. Now, as far as the cache goes, on the 7820X, you get an 11 megabyte L3 cache compared to the 1700. 1700 16 megabyte l3 cache so that's quite a good win there for the 1700 however this is offset by the fact that the 1700 has a 4 megabyte l2 cache to the 8 megabyte l2 cache of the 7820x so it does have the benefit there now let's talk about the test rigs then we'll start with the 7820x obviously it needs an x299 motherboard so this was tested with the msi sli plus uh, this has been pretty good motherboard so far. I haven't really had any issues with it, so it's been quite nice. The Ryzen 7 1700 was tested with the ASUS X370 Crosshair 6 Hero motherboard, which was also really nice. I uh, didn't have any issues with that either. So both are using uh, good motherboards. There's no issues there. Now, as far as GPUs go, they, they both use the same one, the ASUS Strix GTX 1080 Ti. That is a powerful uh, GPU, so there shouldn't be any bottlenecking there. It's a very good GPU. Uh, Memory-wise, they use uh, the, the 1700 use 16 gigabytes of G-Skill DDR4 at 3000 megahertz, whereas the 7820X used uh, 32 gigabytes of Corsair Dominator Platinum at 3000 megahertz so the same memory speed but of course this, the 7820x uh, is using quad channel memory whereas uh, the 1700s is using dual channel memory and as far as coolers go the 7820x requires high-end cooling so it was using my corsair h115i the uh ryzen 7 1700 was just using the wraith spire cooler this is taken into consideration when i uh, draw my conclusion at the end of this video so with all that being said, let's talk about the uh, overclocking and the temperatures then. So consider the difference in coolers here. The 1700 using basically a box cooler, but a very good one at that. The uh, 7820X using a big boy 280mm all-in-one. And look at the stock temps here. The 1700 still wins. That is shocking. Wow. <laughs> uh, unbelievable. Then once we start getting into overclocking, which is more important there, the temps once you start overclocking, uh, the 7820X went up to uh, 4.5 uh, uh, GHz, which is a fairly solid overclock there on all uh, 8 cores. Very good there. Good upgrade over the 6900Ks, which would usually like to sit around 4.2. 
So at, at four and a half gigahertz, you see the temperatures jumped up there to 90 degrees Celsius, whereas the Ryzen 1700 at four gigahertz was only going up to 93 degrees. Again, just consider the difference in coolers used. That's a huge win for the 1700 in terms of temperatures. But in terms of overclocking, I would say it's a win for the 7820X. Uh, it does have a 5 MHz advantage over the Ryzen 1700. So let's jump to the benchmarks then. This is uh, my usual mix of CPU tests and a few games thrown in there and see how these two CPUs perform. the board for the 7820X. I'm not really surprised. Uh, this has a higher clock speed by 500 megahertz when it was overclocked and even the stock clocks are much higher as well. So that was to be expected. This is a powerful CPU. Don't let anybody tell you different. You know, we've harped on at the, all the gripes with uh, Skylake X, but they're still powerful CPUs and that is showed here in these benchmarks. The 1700 kept up in some of them, but it fell behind in others. Overall, it's a good win there for the 7820X, but benchmarks aren't everything. And that brings us nicely into the conclusion where we bring price into the equation. So the 7820X currently at Playtech right now sells for 949 New Zealand dollars, which is quite a bit of money, but that is a cost saving over the previous generation 6900K, which used to come in at about the 1500 New Zealand dollar mark. The 1700, on the other hand, you can pick this guy up at Playtech for 500, uh, sorry, 485 New Zealand dollars. So it's pretty much half the price of the 7820X. Not only that, but we have to bring the motherboards into it. On average, an X299 motherboard will be about twice the price of an X370 motherboard. So that's another expense you have to account for when it comes to these uh, two CPUs. And not only that, but the 7820X requires higher end cooling. So you're going to need to spend like twice the price. Uh, you could get away with just a medium sort of range, medium quality uh, air cooler with the 1700 just fine. Whereas you're going to need high end cooling if you're wanting to overclock the 7820X. So all in all, 
you're going to need to pay about twice as much for the coolers, the motherboard, and the CPU for it to go the Intel way in terms of these two CPUs. And for that, you get on average about 10% better performance. So is it really worth it? I don't think so. I'll put it this way. If uh, you do not care about money, money isn't a problem to you, then get the 7820X. It is the more powerful CPU after all. But you keep in mind, you're going to need to be paying quite a bit more. However, if you're anybody else and you are money conscience, uh, conscious, then definitely go for the 1700. It's going to have about 10% less performance, but considering that it's going to cost you all up about half as much, uh, I think you can deal with that. I personally would make that sacrifice. So yeah, this showdown, I would say the Ryzen 7 1700 wins, uh, in my opinion anyway. But let me know, what do you guys think? Would you say the 7820X wins? Would you rather pay all that extra money for that 10% extra performance? Let me know in the comments section down below. I'd like to know what you guys think. As always, subscribe to my channel, Tech Showdown. It shows you support me, and it makes me keep wanting to make these videos and uh, pump out more CPU showdowns and GPU showdowns. So I'm talking about Vega. <laughs> uh, yeah, I can't say too much right now, but, but things are in the works behind the scenes. Let's just say that. So subscribe to my channel, like this video if you enjoyed it, and as always, I'll see you guys next time.